right, settle down, please, class. I hope you've all got your notepads at the ready, because it is time for today's science lesson, the part of the show where we focus our microscopes on one particular scientific principle. So, do you know what these three things have got in common? This reluctant ride. This swift stopping skater. And this reckless rally driver. Don't worry, they were fine eventually. OK, hands down, everybody. Yes, they're all examples, of course, of acceleration. And we're all probably thinking of the same thing when we say acceleration, a change in velocity over time. But do you know about negative acceleration? And what about centripetal acceleration? Well, prepare to be schooled. As this remote-controlled car speeds off, energy is supplied by the engine and it experiences positive acceleration. And as it brakes, it experiences negative acceleration, a velocity change in a negative direction. Since velocity incorporates both speed and direction, as the car turns, even at a constant speed, it's accelerating. This is called centripetal acceleration. And when it takes off from a jump, it's experiencing the constant gravitational acceleration that brings it back down to Earth. Right now, let's see who's been paying attention with a little pop quiz. Question one. How is acceleration defined? That's right. It's a change of velocity over time. In this case, quite a lot of velocity in quite a short time. That was an example of a positive acceleration. But question two is, what does a negative acceleration look like? Like that. This time the bike negatively accelerates when it hits that ramp and then he negatively accelerates yes, when he hits the bike. That was epic. Question number three. When is maintaining constant centripetal acceleration most important? That's right, on a corner. Speed remains constant, but in a more sideways direction. Unlike that. So that's acceleration. <laughs> All right, class, dismissed.